In the late 1980s, operative laparoscopy began to take root. And in 1989, the first laparoscopic hysterectomy was performed in the United States. This generated a lot of excitement and interest as for the first time, a major operation for women could be performed with minimal incisions and a very short hospital stay. However, there were many challenges in popularizing this surgery, which at that time were performed by only a very few accomplished laparoscopists. As I began performing total laparoscopic hysterectomies from 1990, it was obvious that many difficulties presented that required solutions before the operation could be safely and reproducibly performed. The main reasons why TLH is a difficult procedure is because firstly there is an absence of landmarks during the laparoscopic operation where palpation as at laparotomy with one's fingers is not possible. Also concerns for the safety of the ureters required the necessity for ureteral dissection which prolongs the operation. During colpotomy there was loss of pneumoperitoneum that was troublesome and led to loss of control of the laparoscopic operation. By introducing a choreographed technique in association with enabling devices such as the Rumi and more recently the Rumi Arch uterine manipulator which are coupled with the colpotomizer and pneumo occluder we have addressed making the most difficult part of TLH more manageable and achievable. At the vaginal fornix the ureters are closely related to the uterine artery and this explains the risk of ureteral injury during any hysterectomy, including total laparoscopic hysterectomy. When the co-colpotomizer is introduced into the fornix, together with the roomy uterine manipulator, and the assembly is pushed high into the abdomen, we find that there is a lengthening of the vaginal fornices, and this in turn elevates the position of the uterine artery. In effect, this distances the uterine artery from the ureter, enabling its desiccation or tying to be at a safe distance from the ureter. The Rumi uterine manipulator with its three tip sizes of 6, 8 and 10 centimeters length enabled the mobilization of the uterus very effectively. This versatile uterine manipulator allows antiflexion and retroflexion of the uterus and also allows several degrees of freedom where one can push in, pull out, move to the right or move to the left of the uterine position. This is used for all of our laparoscopic operations, not only hysterectomy, it is particularly useful for endometriosis surgery and infertility surgeries. In designing the device for total laparoscopic hysterectomy, we essentially added the cold cup to the existing Rumi manipulator and tips to simplify the operation. The pneumo occluder, which is an essential part of the operation, occludes the vagina to prevent loss of carbon dioxide when the vagina is divided. This pneumo occluder is inserted over the tip. It does not hamper activity of the uterine manipulator in any way. Next, we use the appropriate size cup and place it over the tip. And this entire setup is positioned into the uterus and vagina, and the rim of the cup can be seen distending the fornix. It is important that the person holding the manipulator or the uterine positioning system maintains pressure so that the fornix is always on stretch. This has the effect of distancing the area on top of the rim where you will be cutting away from the ureters down below. We have found that these three cups make up the spectrum of the cervical sizes that we encounter for TLH. 
The aim is to use the cup that is large enough to cover the entire cervix so that it will distend the fornix appropriately. At the same time, it is important not to use a cup that is too large compared to the cervix as this will pull the vagina towards the cervix and with it pull up the ureter as well. Hence, this will reduce the safety margin of the technique using the cup. At all times, therefore, use a cup that is appropriately sized for the cervix. It is equally important not to use a cup that is too small as it will not fit over the cervix and will only push the cervix away. Therefore, the advantage of the device acting as a landmark for cutting the fornix is not available. It is important to fit the right tip to the uterus. For example, if a uterus sounds to 7 centimeters, we should be using a 6 centimeter tip rather than an 8 centimeter tip. It is obvious that if the tip is too long for the uterus, the end will abut against the uterine fundus and this prevents the cup from fitting into the vaginal fornix. Hence, an erroneous landmark will be created. However, a shorter tip will always allow the fornix to be put on stretch. After the assembly has been positioned and placed in the vagina and the uterus, the uterine balloon is now inflated. We usually inflate with 5 cc of saline and this also allows one to pull out the uterus at the end of the procedure. The pneumocluder can now be inflated with 60 to 100 cc of saline. Thus, we can see with the simple but very effective components of the Rumiko TLH system, all aspects of successfully performing total laparoscopic hysterectomy are covered. We are able to control the mobilization and exposure of the uterus, create a landmark for incising the vaginal fornix accurately, and division of the uterine artery at an increased distance from the ureter. After the colpotomy, the pneumocluder maintains complete control of the remainder of the operation until finally the uterus is removed. The uterine positioning system can be used with the Rumi uterine manipulator and the Rumi arch. It amplifies the versatility of the manipulators with improved stability and control and it can also eliminate the need 